And now over to the municipal bond market, where investors have poured $39 billion into muni debt funds so far this year, the most over the same period since 2008. And in fact, muni returns have beaten those of corporate bonds and treasuries. My next guest points out that there is yet more money, nearly a trillion dollars, to be distributed to state and local governments, which is going to ring in something of a golden age for public finance. Let's bring in Todd Koslick, head of credit and strategy for Hilltop Securities. Tom, this is a lot different than what a lot of people were looking at a year ago when we saw all the business shutdowns, the concerns about local tax revenue, and the idea that even munis weren't safe. Has, is it stimulus that's really turned all that around? So it's a combination of stimulus, but even though there are many people who were expecting the worst and there were a lot of forecasts uh, through the end of last summer, even into the fall, that were uh, pretty negative, for the most part, overall revenues didn't really drop as much as many of us thought. Uh, but I think that so really uh, the demand is really up because credit quality as a result is assumed to be strong. But also, you know, that tax advantage from municipals is something that uh, folks are really considering also. Now, even even in Illinois, right, we're, we're seeing uh, three year bonds sold at year yields near one percent. Illinois has got issues. So th that makes me wonder if you know, the, the embrace of munis on this side of it now a year later might be overdone. In the near term, you know, near term meaning next year or two, maybe three, one of the things that we're expecting is, you know, something like a golden age for public finance. There was $350 billion, well, I should say there is starting to be $350 billion of federal relief that's going to flow through to state and local governments. And then there's another at least $300 billion that's going to flow through to other sectors like to school districts and higher education. Illinois is going to get a, a decent chunk of that $350 billion, and then they're going to get an advantage from some of the higher education money, K-12 through money. So I think that in the near term, this is one of the reasons why a lot of folks are expecting that credit quality overall is going to be pretty good in munis. So is this a golden age or is it a golden moment? I mean, how long is this going to last? What should investors kind of think about or worry about uh, as they examine munis right now? That's a good question. From my perspective, I think that for the next year or two, we're not expecting uh, downgrades to outpace upgrades. I'm expecting that upgrades are going to be outpacing downgrades for the next year or two. Uh, that being said, investors need to remember that there were several uh, I shouldn't say several. There are a handful of meaningful states and some cities that were structurally, structurally imbalanced before COVID. Uh, I am not certain that this is going to be uh, enough for them to be able to correct those structural imbalances that are, you know, years, in some cases, maybe even decades in the making. And so, um, but in the near term, I think that overall uh, downgrades, excuse me, upgrades are going to outpace downgrades. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.